Hi, this is O'Connor and welcome to Contemporary Issues in Sustainability and Accounting. And I'm so excited to begin this unit with you. I want to take you through briefly what we're going to cover in this unit through this first set of PowerPoint slides. So let's get started. Yes, exciting, isn't it? I've spent a lot of time visiting factories and companies, especially in Asia, during the last 10 years to know that sustainability issues is not just a reporting issue like it was maybe 10, 15 years ago. Today, it is quite essential to the competitiveness of organisations and their sustainability in terms of sustaining their business and for being around in 10 years time and 20 years time. Sustainability has many connotations. It's not just about saving the planet. For many organizations, it will be their own survival if they follow what we learn in this unit. Ah, so, you know, there's lots of pronouncements about going green and things like that. And these, some of these are directed at the consumer and so often they are directed at organizations. It really depends, but you see a lot of advertising around green these days. We're going to look at the issue of greenwashing where organizations portray themselves to be green when deep, deep down, they're not that green, really. Ah, wow. All right. So we're going to look at, you know, the different NGOs around the world, the United Nations on climate change, the conference of parties, the COP26 and COP27 and 28, Greta Thun, 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 Thunberg, Thunberg. All right, you know, she's a young activist that has awoken the new generation around the world following the issues of sustainability. Wow. So, you know, we, we can think about sustainability in terms of circular economy. The resources go into the economy and then the waste, but then the waste is turned back into resources again. Like these are issues in sustainability. We can go back many, many decades. And even as early as 1950, there was talk about the environmental component of a sustainable enterprise. You had sustainable agriculture in the 1970s. And then since the 2000s, it has gained a lot of momentum. Even in China, there has been momentum towards a greater consciousness of the environment for the last 30 years, even before China joined the WTO. And as more recent as 2017, there was a huge push in China about cleaning up the seven waterways in China under the Water 10 plan. And that was a real environmental push by the government to make sure factories are not polluting as much as what they have done historically. Ah, wow. And then you, there's lots of talk about sustainability today. So I know why you have chosen this unit. It is an exciting one because there's so many contemporary issues to consider. And we can look at these issues from a multitude of theoretical viewpoints, you know, moral philosophy, strategic management, business law. There's all these different viewpoints of the firm, of the motivations for why firms would choose to become more sustainable and hence be able to report their sustainable actions. Ah, wow. And so we can think about the sustainability in terms of triple bottom line. So it's not just the profits and not just the balance sheet. Okay, it's actually all of the sustainability actions that companies are taking to address their stakeholder concerns. Ah, and then you've got that three circle of sustainability, profits, planet, and the people. And it's kind of like profits is kind of the G, the people are the S, and the planet is the E. The ESG movement that we have going today is very much this triple P idea. Ah, wow. And so going green makes sense. We know that. But to what extent are companies adopting this 
as core in their culture? Or to what extent are companies just reporting, but they're doing something else? We will look at those issues in this unit. Ah, as I said, I've had a lot of experience in visiting factories. I will actually show factory operations and you get to judge for yourself whether a factory is sustainable or not, or has the potential to be sustainable. Ah, there are different perceptions of management about sustainability, the morale, the cost of business, the opportunity to offer avenues for lower cost and risk, and the opportunity to increase revenue and market share through innovation. Of course, there's also the opportunity to get cheaper financing or access more streams of financing than you could if you weren't considered to be a sustainable enterprise. Wow. So these are different perceptions that we want to understand during this course. We're also going to look at some frameworks to help you think about the knowledge and not just pile it up on top of one on top of the other, you know, and just throw the knowledge at you and get you to memorize it all. No, we want to think. And a nice framework, and this one here is about what are we focusing on today or are we focus on tomorrow? Are we focused on internal or are we focusing on external? And often organizations, you cannot sort of focus on all four at the same time without a proper strategy and culture in place. And this is the Hart and Milson framework that we will introduce in the first two weeks of this unit. We'll look at the cost and risk reduction activities that companies can undertake today and they are internal or we can look at what they are doing to report to external stakeholders to make them say look at us we are a sustainable you should buy our shares you should invest in us you should give us finance ah wow but then there's a the perspective of well we really need to innovate because if we don't innovate today there will be no tomorrow and finally there's the perspective of the growth part where we actually are innovating but we're also mindful of who our stakeholders are to make sure that we are aligned with our stakeholders in our path towards the future. Ah, and so there are many different drivers of sustainability that we will consider. You know, industrialization, there's emerging technology, there are the increases in pollutions and also the proliferation and interconnection of civil society, like stakeholders are becoming more active. NGOs, a particular stakeholder, very, very active in some industries like footwear and apparel. So, you know, you've got all of these factors that are driving sustainability. If management are really don't have their own strategic sense to do anything, they're under pressure by all these different technologies and stakeholders to do something today. Yes. Ah, wow. And so the drivers of sustainability require firms to address that they need to create value to have more transparency and to actually show how they're actually adopting new technologies, how they are being innovative so they can have a more sustainable future in the value they create for their stakeholders. Ah, wow. And so, you know, we can expand this framework of the different drivers in terms of the split between internal, external, today and tomorrow. We will consider that in the first week. And of course, if we look at the strategy, pollution prevention, they are, these are the issues and the drivers. If we look again externally today, these are the drivers and a lot of it is driven by stakeholders. If we look at tomorrow and the technology, you can see AI is starting to play a greater part in that. You've got a lot more of work of technology taken over mundane tasks in organizations, but it's the innovative technology that will make an organization sustainable in the future. Ah, and then finally, you know, you've got that real moral inspiration and creating opportunities for the future. And this is where the strategy of the organization comes to the forefront because you need the strategy, not just to, to drive the operations and the technologies that need to be in place for the future, but also it drives that sustainable culture, that buzz 
that people get when they come to work for you. Ah, the sustainable organization that's going to be around for a long time to come. Ah, so there's these four areas that we can address. And as I said, a company needs a really well honed strategy to integrate all of these perspectives that start with strategy rather than compliance. And we, we will address those two issues in this semester. So the, one of the main points of our common future, many of the same causes of these problems simultaneously underpin entrenched poverty and overconsumption. So there's all these moral perspectives of sustainability and what is the role of the organization today. Ah, and so graphically put, you know, you got one, some parts of the world that are just over consumers and other parts of the world that are the have nots. And we will think about that from the point of view of modern slavery because you have lots of the developing world entrenched in the slavery of global supply chains and some global companies tend to turn a blind eye to it whereas others are being forced to reckon with how their employees are treated in developing economies. So we will look at that modern slavery as well. There you go, the value of sustainability. We're going to look at more detail in week two. This is O'Connor. Thank you for joining this exciting unit. Look forward to seeing you in class. Bye for now.